Hello and welcome back. It's time for Dust 2, the final map of the evening and the final match of the evening, which is Cloud9 versus Team Liquid. I have, I always, when it's Dust 2 matches, I always pay attention to how the CTs hold long. That's the kind of thing I just watch uh, on, on the radar and obviously in the game itself. So uh, I think Pimp is pretty good at holding the long area, if I'm not mistaken. He's uh, often, in recent matches I've seen, it's often been uh, short, which has sometimes been lost, and he's held a long area for the retake, bit successful or otherwise. Uh, we'll see if he can do that today. Anyone in particular you're looking out for? It's pretty much, there's just so many aspects at play on, on a map like this. Um, but if, of course, like Skadoodle, JDM, two easy picks. So we'll just go with that as the pistol round has started. Cloud9 on the CT side here. You can see the very, very typical play, classic smoke. I think normally, uh, oh, actually, that's a smoke on Xbox, actually, instead of at the end of shorts. Sometimes you see at the end of the short to block the CT's aggressive place for info. But uh, there is a counter smoke there from the CT's to slow down the T's a little bit. And Charles actually going to drop off, looking for that split from B. But now he hears the steps. Now they know what's coming. Oh, that's a fantastic pop, but he won't get much more. Well, they're trying to make their way over to the site. Skadoodle gets the reload in, but can he get any more kills? He can't. Automatic and Street 2K pushing from short. Do Liquid know where they are? They do now, and they've got double men. So this should be very difficult, to say the least, for Cloud9. There you go, Street 2K. Automatic can get nothing done either. Pistol round goes to Liquid. Pistol rounds, always important, but perhaps a little less important on Dust 2. I mean, it gives you the, gr the great advantage. But uh, is there a, is there a minimum amount of rounds per side on Dust Two that one needs these days? No, I hate that question. <laughs> I think like, like I I hate the question where it's like how many rounds does the team need? It's uh, it's 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 redundant. Anyway, moving forwards, we've got three UMP. <laughs> kind of just shutting you down there uh, casually. I've got three it's UMPs fine. there. I can take it. <laughs> team Act Ten, so Liquid, Classic Anti. Uh, eco kind of stuff or anti force by type stuff and i love that c9 have not over invested into the into this round because it's very hard one of the hardest maps to get anything done on the ct side with a force by is dust two and he's just poking and prodding there up catwalk he's going to find himself a couple kills with the help of jdm and that's that's pretty nice that's uh, the round almost over then as they look to control the a site and there you go pretty much everybody dead now for c9 and wow this that was a little bit brutal at least they make it quick. They made it quick and they made it clean. Yeah, it was surgical, but with a spoon. Rusty one. That doesn't. Sa that does not sound clean at all, or quick. Mm, yeah, you're probably right. Well, maybe it was uh, different than advertised. Liquid moving quickly into the long area. There are three CTs here. They don't have much to offer. Apart from That's lots nice. of money, apart from $600 per person for Elige. Again, another round where Elige is just making bank. He's a man of expensive tastes, Stan. And those tastes will be satisfied. They will be uh, nourished with the money from that UMP. Time for Cloud9 to get their buyout, though, and they should be able to afford themselves the AWP. Um, Yes, we, we see, you can see it on the Skadoodle there. And no utility for him, though. But he does have some Kevlar, which is a bonus sometimes in rounds like this. You don't always expect it, but he's going to be able to get it this time around. And I like that Liquid is going for a full long take just to kick off the round. We're not seeing Liquid develop a default. We saw a lot of them, a lot of defaults from them uh, yesterday on Dust2, uh, you know, showing the wealth of uh, plays that they can build from that. But right now, very fast long take. And it's quite interesting because Cloud9, their opener is is not standard. Instead of having three players early and long, they go for catwalk control with Skadoodle. So Liquid taking a long, seeing nobody there so quickly, tells them exactly kind of uh, exactly the opener of Cloud9. But the, the real mix up here is, is the push into T spawn from Stewie. That could be the difference maker for Cloud9. And I think Stewie loves more than uh, being in a weird, unexpected place. Liquid spending a lot of time with minimal map control. And now Elige with the UMP is going to be the information man moving down the middle area, but Stewie 2K in T in T spawn. That tells Liquid they have to go, and that the CTs know where they are. But can they find themselves a victory? We've got JDM moving up late on long, so if they push through the smoke, the CTs 
Then things may not go their way. Elise and Pimp with the headshots for days. How is Elise still alive? Well, the weird thing with Elise there is he is, is Stewie was in T spawn, shooting him with a rifle, and then he decides to run all the way back to B tunnels to meet Elise, and Elise knew he was coming there as well. And the push was very far away from the tunnels, so I guess maybe she was just going for the instant save, but it seemed like a little bit too early for, to go for that. By the way, the result is that Cloud9 will be crushed in that round. And and again, just going for the fast long take was very cool from Liquid. I wonder what will happen next time we see that on a buy round, because you could you must expect Cloud9 on most of the time to have the three men there early in the round with, by, with the, uh, the rifles. Yeah, it's not often you see fast plays coming out repeatedly or, or at all into the long area. Yeah, really, Liquid are really abusing the fact that Cloud9 has no ability to really see what's coming. Uh, and so you can have very fast timings up Catwalk, very fast timings into a long. And with the rifles against the pistols, there's just so little that you can do. I mean, where do you hide? It's not like this is Inferno. It's not like this is Train. It's not like this is, you know, even, uh, even to an extent Nuke. Everything, the spaces are so open on this map. They're just having a pistol. You just don't have many spots to work it from uh, to get those close range engagements. So, yeah, long is absolutely ideal for uh, playing out around an anti eco, anti force by round. As is fast B pushes as the mix up. Those are the two standard anti, anti force by drills that you tend to see on this map that are very effective. You have to wonder if this kind of simple map will eventually disappear. Will this be a thing of the past? No, no, absolutely not. Because the thing is, is that there is so much depth to a map like Dust 2, so much coordination and so much in the way of fundamentals to be f perfected. And it gives a type of gameplay that is, is quite different to a lot of other maps. As well as the fact that metagame also makes things very interesting. Metagame can always re refresh a map, no matter how old it's be it's, it is, how unchanged it has been for many years, the metagame will always be changing. But what if the map has changed, Dan? That's, because that's where I'm leading. What if it's taken away? then we won't be able to play it, play it anymore. Yeah. Who knows what the future holds? 5-0. Cloud9 back on the buy. Solid hold on long this time. Nothing going to be in the pit. And it's Liquid with another fast play. Just trying to catch Cloud9 out of position and win the duels. But this is a strong position for Skadoodle. We've seen him deliver from here time and time again. So far, so good. Pimp gets taken down. And indeed, Cloud9 will focus on control of long. And they can have two men opt to come back for short. Elise moving forward with Pico in for support. So it seems the T's going to go for a retake. JDM doesn't have a flash for them, but the CTs do. Down goes Pico, down goes the Elise. It's JDM versus four. Yes, they planted a bomb, but they only managed to get one kill. And that is massive for Cloud9. It's going to be a lot of money in the bag. Desperately needed money. Yeah, it's going to be quite cool to see what Liquid busts out of the the, uh, the bag of tricks here for this round because th their money is actually unreal. Th they had they had so much success on those anti eco rounds where they didn't lose anybody on top of getting all the kills the SMGs consistently across the team. That th 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 the amount of money they have into the seventh round is just absolutely outrageous. And there's so many places for them to go to still also. And you can see JDM goes for the fast peek here into the B bomb site. Will he be fortunate? He receives a flash, so nice diligent play from Cloud9 to get the flash off there to just deny JDM anything really. Although they didn't even cross into the angle, so no risk was taken. And JDM will just hold. And Cloud uh, Liquid, are, are, they're sort of in default right now, uh, just wait, but they're somewhat invested in JDM getting a pick here. You can see the bomb has also dropped outside of the B tunnels, so uh, they can make this look like a default, uh, but they already seem to have decided to some extent that they kind of want to go Look towards peak, but that is a genius peak. That is so smart because if you're on the plateau, if you stand up, you're exposed. It's that simple. There's there's nowhere to hide. But Stuart K is using his falling trajectory to peek into the tunnel in a spot where Orpers would pre-fire you if you were on the barrels, for example or crouching on the uh, ridge of the plateau itself. That is really smart stuff, which I haven't seen before. Always good to be learning. Automatic facing the door. Got some information for his team, and Street 2K will charge out. Two kill for him. Flashbang, and he will face the tunnels as well, almost killing his teammate. Pretty uh, quick on the trigger finger there is Street 2K. And getting to go for that peak. Off angles being held. 
the Doodle going to take Kiko away from the window. Stewie finally goes down, but he's got a three versus one for his team in this situation. No scope for JDM. 20 seconds for him to find two plays. There's a flank coming in from nothing. And surely he's going to go down. Moving just in time. Double stack. Surely nothing can stop this. Oh, that was so close. JDM, such a dangerous play. Even in the, in the one versus two with an AWP. There's so much he can do. He was really unlucky in that situation. Cloud9, another round on the board. But still, Elige has 12k at the beginning of this round. Yeah, there's a lot of cash there. I mean, we saw him get so many kills with the UMP uh, repeatedly that he is quite happy, quite happy, quite healthy. And fast on take again. Nice little self-pop flash there. Very easy, very simple one to pull off. Elige keeps the pace going as he charges the corner. Oh, that's really unfortunate there. Shroud maybe trying to look away for more additional flashes, maybe from teammates even. But the long area will be well and truly won by the Liquid side as they go four versus two. That is a very harsh reality for Cloud9. Having won that round previous, uh, just previous to the last one with four players left alive is going to really start to count now as they go into this situation where they will be lucky to keep uh, more than one weapon alive. Although that said, now that Liquid have uh, just three players, they might not feel too invested in trying to go for uh, frags hit. Cloud9 2 versus 3, do they decide to give this up and go for the save? It's a pretty marginal situation for them. If they hold on to this weaponry, nothing's got almost 6k in the bank, so you can probably drop a weapon. So they can have four weapons and somebody on a 5.7 or a CZ in the following round. It seems that is their, well, the situation they are facing. Yeah. Definitely the play to make. Automatic has to be very careful not to die, though. Liquid moving 6-2. to two. I don't think Cloud9 will be too concerned in the current situation, the current scenario. Oh, who are those guys with that song in scenario? With the remix of Buster Rhymes. A Tribe Called Quest. Highly recommend that. The scenario remix and the original. Tribe, one of the old school greats. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's see whether or not Liquid can keep the uh, keep pressing on Cloud9's weakness here, because uh, there is certainly weakness. If I mean, imagine if they were to get crushed in this round. They've got two orbs. They've spent absolutely everything. Liquid already have six rounds. Only two right now for Cloud9. Look at how quickly in this uh, kind of default setup we saw Liquid just throw three players, including the bomb, towards that B tunnels. Sometimes when the AWPA gets to pick across the doors, you just go straight into the B-bomb site. Wham, bam, and done. And Liquid getting themselves a very fast timing here. Looking for this, the blind B-split. Just going for the chaos. And in amongst the chaos, shines an automatic, but he'll be taken down. The important frags, though, will be one in the B-bomb site, allowing the bomb to be planted here. JDM is alive and kicking. Two versus three here for Liquids. Wild, rabid rounds here on Dust2. So JDM, can he deliver on this occasion? He's in a two versus three rather than a one versus two. Teammate watching the tunnel, but there's no one in the tunnel. Double stack will be his uh, standing ground. There goes the little jumping into the corner. That's a nice second frag as well. And Nitro will finish things off. JDM is so sick with the AWP. That is such an important second frag from him. I don't know how he delivers these shots at close range. Yeah, and I was worried for Liquid there that after that great work from JDM that Nitro couldn't close. He had a pretty long drawn out spray there and he was very low on health. However, he does get the kill in the end and that's going to reset Cloud9. They do have a little money in the bank there, having lost their second in the row there. But again, we see the fast long take, beautiful stuff here. He could get himself into an engagement. Uh, so there are multiple players here with pistols on the long area. Look for the challenges. And it's just keeping things simple here, our Liquid. And I have to say, I, can't, I can never really emphasize enough how much I enjoy that on the anti-eco. Never want to make it too complicated. And keep the pace up high. Just do it now, just gonna run in. Probably just try to die immediately. And uh, get on to the next round. Eight to two, Liquid with a very, very strong start to their map in this double header against Cloud9. Two of the favorite teams, I might add, for the top spots in ECS season two. Very curious to see how the North American League will look by the end of it much stronger league, maybe the strongest it's ever been. 
So we have another challenge towards the long area. Elise with the UMP, but there are too many assailants on this occasion. There's one high on a plateau. Trades will go in favor of the CTs now. Four versus two. And Liquid will have to back off. Hiko can't afford to lose a bomb in this situation. Nitro looking through the middle area will not win his duel. It's just a duel fest at the moment with some smokes and flashbangs making cameo appearances. He goes to look how patient the spray is. Two versus one situation, but he is uh, pretty relaxed. Never stresses out during games. Always the calm head. Keeps the players level headed. One versus three. He's, he's got time on the clock. He's good at uh, eliminating the options, but Skadoodle is just as good holding the line with the AWP, and he will deliver. Third round on the board for Cloud9. Yeah, and the money is somewhat endless for Liquid, as you know, we had a glimpse of there. And you can see Alicia is really far forwards there with the UMP. And that's, that's part of, that's sort of his job is to be a bit expendable, but what you can see there as well is that his teammates were actually very, very far behind him. And if you got that play, you kind of want him to make the trades. But it's time for a new round. And JDM once again repeatedly denied. I think Cloud9 really have shown Liquid that they can't really get early picks or that the early round is not a place where you can find a kill on the B-bomb side. That's just how Cloud9 are playing it. Very disciplined there in that sense. And so Liquid will need to find other aggressions if they want to have an early pick in the round. Interesting smoke there from Cloud9. JDM still has a gap to work with, though. And uh, Liquid are in a, in a spot right now where they would like to get some information. They don't know if, if like, what kind of setup the CTs are playing. Are they playing 2-3 or is it 2-1-2? Right now, we, c we can see it's a 2-1-2. No one's on Goose there for the Cloud9 side. Nothing still in the pit. But he will not see any action for a while. He has one flashbang, which he can risk trying to flash behind the Skadoodle to help him. Can do a jump throw from that direction. Shroud in as a boost spot. Oh dear, Skadoodle doesn't get the first shot. More counter flashes coming in, but Liquid have the numbers game in their favor. Shroud can only take one, but he'll get traded immediately. Now nothing is pushing, but his teammates have fallen. Those are really hard shots. His entire body is exposed versus their head. Long, uh, sorry, short, getting charged by Liquid, leaving nothing alone with the AWP. They know where he is as well. He has no escape. I actually thought that Liquid would lose this round because they had no split and they were challenging Skadoodle in a way where they don't have a flash. There was not a single flash for the AWPA playing card. There was none, no, not that I could see. Skadoodle, at least, we were on his point of view and he was not blinded once, I don't think. And that is worrying because Skadoodle is really good, James. He's a very good AWPA. And when you have really good solid AWPAs on the card position, they blow up your A cat pushes. So that was a little bit scary. And you can see there, Nitro just immediately kills him on the corner there. Um, so that is, I don't think that's happening most of the time. I think you've got to splash that AWPA away. Otherwise, you are at a big risk if you're not going to go for the A split. Either way, Liquid with a very timely victory, once again crippling Cloud9. And Cloud9 never have money. Liquid, whenever they lose a round, they always have money. Lots of it. Stewie so going for the push early. This is an eco round from Cloud9. And they are dying as they should, on paper at least. Oh, pimp. Time and a place to pull out the flashbang. Maybe that wasn't it. Automatic, the only one remaining. There we go. Cheeky business. Elige taken down some extra money made by Automatic. But it's a consolation frag at this point. 10 to 3. Dominating half so far from Liquid. Can a C9 make it to 5? The buy comes back in. Automatic dropping the AWP for Skadonglers. One AWP per side. Nothing limited to the FAMAS. Not great many grenades here. C9 with a standard take of long on the CT side. And there's no fast aggression from Liquid on this occasion. Standard setup. Bomb moving through suicide on JDM. Always important to have the player in lower tunnel on the T side because even if you have an AWPA in mid, if there's a if there's a boost on short, he will not be able to catch it. You need eyes on that from top mid or from lower tunnel. So Liquid clearing out the short area. All fairly standard stuff for the time being. Pimp outside 
the B hauls just in case there is a push from the CT side. Could give them a nice opening. But C9 being passive on this occasion. If Liquid, I mean, again, if Li Liquid have a, a really good chance at going for the push onto the, the A bomb site because there's only really Skadoodle to worry about. But they, ha if they're going to go for that, they have to smoke him or flash him off somehow when they're making the quick approach to the catwalk plant. They make the short plant. That's really, that's really nice. There's no player on boost to punish it, but they go for something a bit more creative here. We get the drop from Catwalk into CT there for the fast trades, and they're going to basically crush the defense around the B bomb site, then pincer it from both positions. The B split, the good old B split, and three versus three. Stewie on the bomb site, but not for long. There just has to, only has a pistol to work with in the end. As that sidearm comes out, and Hiko is going to just plant himself in the most annoying position. Oh, he just sees just a sliver through the smoke there, enough to take down Skadoodle. And that's going to be that when it comes to Cloud9's attempt to take this round, I think, as nothing realizes. Best just to take the AWP and run. And Cloud9 is going to be down 3 to 11 now. And that is very scary, to be honest. How do you come back from three rounds if they can't get any more? It's all about a pistol. If they only start with three. Momentum is possible with it's Dusty after all. I mean, we have seen, I think when we were doing the de development league, we had some days where no one could win CT rounds or something like that. Just like yeah. or, or T rounds, regardless of like what map it was. It just seemed like to be like, today, no one wins <laughs> T rounds. <laughs> or, or today, no one wins CT rounds. Just to run the randomizer there. So you never know. You never know. That is why Counter-Strike is so interesting. Last round. C9 have an AWP and a UMP. A few pistols here and there. Stu 2K leading the charge. Loves a uh, B push. Three players in there in total for the CT side. Nice tap by Liege. He's stuck with the Molotov. Nice stuff. You see nothing boosted on short. Really smart stuff. Wow. No escape. That is <laughs> not nice. C9 with a plan. That's hilarious. I love that. The sheer hopelessness of that situation. <laughs> my my escape path is covered in flames. Lathered in flames. I have nowhere to go. Hiko. He is creating places to go though. Nice entry from him. Nothing though, he's just sitting on the site. Sneaky position from him with 5-7. 5 is a scary. Oh. Oh no. AK could potentially be there. Up for grabs, but he can't get the second frag to secure it. However, Hiko now has to clutch against two players. The bomb has not been planted. But thankfully for Hiko, he has a minute to play with. Oh, and he's going to catch Stewie on the run. Oh no. Cloud9 now in some trouble. And Hiko with a decent read, I think, as to the most likely positions of the remaining player. Now he hears the sound cues. Oh. He heard sound towards. Okay, now he knows. Automatic's giving it up. And Hiko's just trying to bait him out. He's got 30 seconds still to play with. Oh! oh Automatic's going to nail it. Good stuff there with the UMP just to claw back one single round. One more round for Cloud9, but it's only one more added to a total, a sum of four in this half. Not, not a great look. All the right plays from both players in the end of that round, but Automatic will be the one to prevail. So... Now this is interesting because if C9 win pistol, then 7-11 is reasonable. And then they are right back in the match. But it's easier said than done. Liquid are going to have the range advantage with the pistols. Hiko continuing with the P2000. Molotov and a flashbang for him. And the rest with Kevlar and USPs. Nacho going to have the timing peaks. Doesn't have too many bullets to be spamming that smoke and indeed C9 are going to move behind it and I think Hiko would have heard a tag in there that Molotov might be too close to home we'll find out indeed it is he has to move back he's thrown it too close it's going to force him out from the sneaky position and that could be the round who knows what that means three plays here for Liquid flying headshots perhaps bomb goes down and he's by the door waiting for his teammates to join him yeah pretty awkward spot but it's always possible on a pistol round USP is coming in now, ready to go in. They're just waiting for that third player to get into the upper dark area. Oh no! This is catastrophic for Cloud9. All the headshots for Liquid. It's as if it is written in the stars that they should take this dust to. Everything is going their way. 
Elijah, why are you so sick? Three easy USP kills for him. But I mean, that I knew as soon as Hiko threw that Molotov that it was way too close and he was going to be on fire. <laughs> but Elige, the hero of the hour, brings it back. Maybe it's supposed to be like that. Maybe he's 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 positioned it. He's got a setup there, so it's like pixels away. So and he like kind of was a couple pixels off. Nope. To just like don't don't give him any any. <laughs> if you give Hiko an inch, she'll take a mile. That was entirely his fault. It was a poor play. I would have played it better. Well, maybe there's. And I taught him everything he knows. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe there's a real chance here. Cloud Nine are up two men. Right now, Hiko and Nitro last man standing. Can Hiko redeem himself after s the self-immolation of the previous round? We shall see. We've got Nitro moving in here. And he's detected at the point oh of the bomb, no. and Hiko's about to get wrecked. Fully wrecked. Surely. Well, no, he manages to turn the corner in time. It looks like the T actually slowed his roll there. Yeah, it's the nothing. timing was perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Shroud with the scout trying to be Skadoodle. Is he able to be Skadoodle? Yes, he hits the hits the shot to Nitro. Nitro 10 HP, flying uh, Stewie 2K from a smoke, of course. What a what a better way to win the round is there? He was born in a smoke, James. He was born into this world in a he smoke. He emerged the smoke. He emerged from the smoke. He is a smoke monster. He is basically a smoke monster. The way that just happens. So C9 somehow steal a round way, and that is a round which may stop them from losing the map. We will see. There's still a long path to victory. But the situation was dire following that pistol recovery from Elige, but now they find themselves in this situation. Double scouts on the CT side. This is a force buy for the most part, save for JDM. He's holding out for his for his girly, for his AWP. I do wonder if a leech has adjusted. Can he fire his shot at the apex of his jump? We've all seen the charts on the bloggers. The blogosphere, Dan. Do you say that word regularly? Blogosphere? No. The blogosphere. What the CSGO they, blog is technically part of the blogosphere. Where it showed uh, changes to the jumping accuracy of the scout. And now you must hit the shot at the apex of your jump if you are to deliver said accuracy. Otherwise, it has a, a scale of infavorability. <laughs> what? <laughs> Inaccuracy? That too. Okay, well, Hiko's going to find his way through the doors there. Oh, no! Nate in the hand! Gun in the hand Hiko, but he will not have time to wield it. No time... No time. Skadoodle will make time for the CTs even less now as the bomb starts to take away. And uh, there is a real chance here. I mean, they got they have scouts. They've got a UMP. Uh, Stewie has no Kevlar. So it's not done just yet. But they decide, I think, to go back and save what they got. But Stewie will not allow it. It is not allowed. Stewie the nuisance. Stewie the pain. Stewie. Alicia's what been do they call him young Stew? Yeah. And, and Alicia's been allowed to live to send a message. Send a message. Yeah. The messenger. Normally they'll throw him in a well or he'll go back but only his head. But Liege has been allowed to leave a free man. To live I mean to live in fear. To tell to what to happened to his teammates. To tell the tales of, of of fear. Hiko's mother respects my uh my choice in casual footwear, by the way. Wait, which which casual footwear? Well, I'll tell you afterwards, you know, I don't wanna put the brands out there on the stream, but this is this is a noted fact that she, she respects my footwear swag. Hiko might not. He thinks my footwear is like a mountain climber's footwear, which definitely isn't. But she, she I has, agree with him. She, she, well, she doesn't. Liquid with double the score of Cloud9. But not much to offer in this round. Cloud9 have a long road to victory. And they will be meticulous and careful and slow. Well, let's hope they don't run out of gas. 
We've got Stewie with the UMP, the man to draw the fire, the man to charge, the man of action. However, Shroud will be the most forward man on the catwalk at the moment. Stewie has repositioned towards double doors, which is going to be a bit more of a risky peak there. Could be players on either side, so definitely smart to have Stewie be the man on, on, the, uh, on the task. And he'll be creeping amongst... amongst, amongst um, well, I can't say that word now for some reason. Amongst, amongst the, the smoke. <laughs> and uh, he'll find his way up the ramp there from CT spawn. And look at how the T's are surrounding the A bomb site. This is actually quite a beautiful take. I mean, again, I do praise simple plays on anti ecos, and, but I like the, the kind of flair to this round that uh, Cloud9 brought to the table. Uh, Eco will not get too much done there for Liquid, and uh, Cloud9 start the. They do start that uh, ascent. The journey of redemption, the journey of salvation is at hand for Cloud9 now as they take economic control of the match. And should they win this round, then the fun really begins. And Skadoodle, he's ready for this. Doesn't get anything though. And now it's Cloud9 with a potential fast long take. Two players ready and waiting. But maybe they'll be subject to the flashbangs of Cloud9. There's the first one. Smoke's on the corner, but they haven't got that wall of smoke to isolate Pip in this situation. Elish coming in as well, but the flash, the late flash will slow him down. Bomb spotted. But look at where all the CTs are. They're miles away. And nothing is in T spawn. I'm not sure if he can see the cross from there. He's doing a bit of jiggle peeking. Also looking at B. He's waiting for a reaction from Liquid. But this sucks. They're if not you're sure the what's CTs. going on either. This sucks if you're the CTs, man. There's over a minute left. You're, you're down two players. You have no idea if the entire team is there, if one guy's there, or if nobody's there. You have no idea. And you also have no real idea to find. Y there's no real safe way to find out. So you kind of have to take a gamble here. And you can see that Liquid are going to go for the gamble towards the B-bomb site. And it's a really smart one because with what they have right now, it is the safest way to play this round because they know that B was just recently safe. So they can, they know they can get there. Maybe Cloud9 would have actually rotated there. It, I mean, it turns out that, that, that it was not what they did and it is the less likely play overall. But at least this way, Liquid can either defend very well B on B or they can save those three guns, which makes a lot of sense. It's, sometimes it's good to just say, you know what? The round was lost at this uh, at that point on long. It was lost. It's done. Let's just uh, save, move on to the next round, have a good chance there to take it. Because as, as we can see here for the money, they don't really have the opportunity to, to do much. And they will have actually a decent buy because it's going to be the fourth round loss in a row. Meaning that they'll be on $2,900 to players who survive can as there's three of them, can drop weapons for the two uh, people who died. So they'll have a very good buy if they can survive with three players. Two players can work as well. Although if it's only two players, that means one guy's getting a pistol instead, I think. So can we make it happen? Oh, the timing. No, three players survived. That's a very, very big deal here for Liquid. Can they stem the bleeding? Can they stop the momentum? Where's the tourniquet at? Because this bleeding is colossal. <laughs> Four rounds between the two sides. There's still quite the road to recovery. And indeed, Liquid are heading towards maximum loss bonus. Which means more and more buys for the CT side as they continue to lose. If they continue to lose, should they continue to lose? Elige is in a CT spawn. We've got two plays deep in A and two plays deep in B. C9, one would presume, they will be meticulous once again. They'll take their sweet time and wait for their first opening. Carefully taking the short area with multiple people. Two, in fact. That's going to cause the liege to make his way over towards A, which means there's a hole in CT spawn at present, but there's also a smoke there. So maybe that hole cannot be investigated just yet. And now perhaps they will breach. They may be going for the Smokes Cloud 9 on either side of uh, CT spawn, so they can't be sniped from B or A. This is going to be really scary for Liquid. They have an appalling setup to deal with a B split right now. They don't have anybody in CT spawn. Their rotation to B is so far away. The two players here, Nitro and Nico, they have to hold everything by themselves. Nico dies immediately. Nitro gets only one frag. That is usually going to be an instant save for, for the players on A. 
because they're so far away. But they're going to lose those players because Shroud is just, just cutting off rotation. Oh, this this could not have gone worse for Liquid. This could not have gone worse. And this, the sad thing for Liquid is that Cloud9, they, they built this play. They confirmed that the B-Split would be money when they were able to push uh, through the double doors and see that absolutely nobody was in CT. Nobody. B-Split comes in, and what are you going to do, James? Eco Nitro, they have to get two or three frags to make it even possible. And even then, it's very hard. That was a really nice round from Cloud9. I'm not sure if they used two or three smokes in the middle area in that particular round, but it was definitely two at the very least. Again, on the opposite corners. But then there was a charge through the smoke into the site, then Molotov as well. The timing was marvelous. Moving into long, the timing may not be so good. Pimp will 5-7 nothing into Oblivion. And he may be in good stead to pick up that weapon as well. Elise taken down elsewhere. This should be around for Cloud9, but how do they recover in a situation where well, that's one way to do it? Push coming in for, towards B. Nothing doing. JDM hiding in the corner. Pop flash comes in, but it's maybe a little bit too late. And telegraphed. Yeah, Liquid just can't seem to find find a good answer right now. In Cloud9, a lot of their plays, they, they aren't necessarily trying to build the information database, you know, build all the, uh, get all the info on the clipboards before they make those big decisions as to what's better. Sometimes they're just going, we just want to play around like this. We don't really care what's going on. We are going to do a, an A split now. We're going to do a B split now. And uh, Liquid just are not finding the right setups uh, to deal with it. And they, they're not looking to try to find information either. There's no timely you know, B pushes or upper dark pushes and uh, so on and so forth from them. And so that is become becoming an issue as Cloud9 are just really having some great guesses as to how to attack Liquid setups. And all oh, the timing. Are they going to just go through this? This is a very fast timing if they decide to just walk into mid right now. He goes boosted though. But he's got the M4 A4, which means they will hear him rattling off his fire. When is he going to peek? There's no push coming to his direction. Spots one towards door. Not sure about the window though. Nitro goes down on B. And there's nobody else. It's a great play from C9 because everyone else is towards A. Yeah, there's a chance here though uh, for Liquid to take this now because the players, because of Hiko as well, at that forward position, it's not just about delaying them and getting kills, but it allows, it prevents the T's from taking position into CT spawn to delay rotation even further, and so on and so forth. So, uh, Liquid have a much more realistic chance here at a retake, but against four players, it's going to be tough now. Most utility is gone though for the DTs, just a flashbang left, that's going to be tossed out, and I uh, can see Hiko tossing in, in his grenades as well. And then they go, storming through, they have a smoke grenade to cover them through the double doors, and nothing, Skadoodle and Shroud are going to lock it down one round away now from tying things up and Liquid look desperate. Cloud9 have won seven rounds in a row. The only round Liquid have won in its half was the pistol. And they've failed repeatedly since then. Nothing but failure. Failure. Tactical pause has been called by DDK. What? I'm just making, sure you're, I'm just making sure you're listening to me. That's not. I'm just checking. I d but I just repeat the word that you just said. Tactical pause has been called by a liquid nitro laying in the command. So lads, we've lost seven rounds in a row and now they are one round behind us. We have maximum loss bonus, but right now our money sucks. What are we going to do? Those are the questions running through the liquid camp. Why are they losing that? Well, in a lot of these rounds, again, they're not really taking any forward information in any spots. Like, we're, ne we're never seeing any aggressions from them. They're kind of allowing Cloud9 to just do whatever they want. And and to some degree, I think Cloud9 are getting a little bit lucky because one of the, again, you know, we talked about it, we talk about it all the time about defaults. And one, about one of the reasons you run defaults is to uh, ascertain as to how the CTs are playing. And there's two things you're watching out for as the T side with your default. You want to know if it's a 2-1-2 if it's a two -one -two setup or a 2-3 setup. And if it's a 2-3, you want to go for the B play because the rotation is really far away and the B split just hits you. It's just so incredibly scary if there's no one in CT spawn and, you know, vice versa. If there's, if there's no extra man on the A site for the 2-3 setup, then, um, like, uh, sorry, if there is a guy, an extra guy on the site, then it's very hard to actually plant because that goose position can be quite hard to deal with. And 
So you know, generally, it, like those are the two dynamics, the two like money bits of info you're looking for as a T side. Cloud9 haven't really been caring too much about that. They've actually sort of just gone with reads. They've just gone with these blind plays. We want to do this, we want to do that. We're not going to spend time trying to build the information and, and try to you know, entry frag here or there. We're just going to go for these plays. And right now, Liquid is just sitting there and receiving them. Um, and it's just not they're just not able to defend them. So from that aspect, you kind of want to see them be a bit more proactive. Or it could be that Liquid feel like they are in good spots. They're just not hitting their shots. In that case, the pause, you just want them to get back into the into focus and try to reset their minds a little bit. So we'll see what, what kind of option they take here. We see passive play on the next buy. At least doing what he can, but there's two more people to find and he can't do it. So we've got two plays over towards B for Liquid, playing close to the tunnel in case the T's head there. And then there's Pimp with the scout. There's a push coming in towards B now. But uh, this is being waited for. Well, there was a push, but they've decided against it. There are some nice crossfire setups you can have on the T side in the tunnel between the stairs area and the box on the opposite entrance, opposite side of the entrance to B, where emerging CTs essentially face both at the same time. But it won't be required on this occasion because the push didn't come in. 45 seconds left for this anti-eco to play out for Liquid. For C C9, for both teams. So just keeping it pretty calm here. Pimp is going to realize the pressure is about to come. He's got that angle with the scout. It's pretty difficult to play with it uh, now with the jumps, so it's going to be hard for him to get too much done. Hiko has a pretty cool position, though. Might be able to spot the head of the planter, but he's just checking short, just checking the wrong angle. So unfortunate. Could have been a frag there for him, but no. No no frags, no cheeky kills there for Hiko. Ooh. Nasty killing the pimp there from automatic. 12-12, and finally, the wrong road. They've reached uh, a good point here. They've reached a tied score. Can they keep it going, or is this where it ends? We get double ops from Liquid. Are they going to mix things up, or are they going to keep kind of waiting for the players to come in? Because in some rounds, when they've done that, they have had good setups to deal with what Cloud9 are doing, but they just don't quite hit their shots. So, can Hiko and Nitro step it, on, step it up on B? That has been a bit of an issue, has B, for Liquid. Cloud9 taking it really slow here. This is really smart from Cloud9 as well, because they okay, they're very aware that the pause came in. And one difference you can see from Liquid already is the presence on Catwalk uh, from them. No one on long, and JDM picks up the kill onto Shroud already. So a very different setup actually from the CTs here. They really desperately want Cloud9 to go for a B play. They are begging for it. They have a, an amazingly strong uh, potential for not only rotation, but to defend it with three players basically there. It's a very Astralis type play actually. It's quite gambly, but if you feel like a B is the weakness, then that is a good response. You can kind of bait the T's to go for it too with the info you give them. But they've discovered that long is clear, James. So how will Cloud9 interpret this now that they have this extra bit of information? Automatic has been there for quite a while, not overextending, waiting for his team. C9 may be trying to get a read as to what exactly is going on on the C side, C -C side, but I haven't seen much. I haven't seen many people. Street 2K lurking, lurking in the uh, B tunnels. And again, Pimp and Liege. In fact, three people. Hiko as well. Still over towards the A site. Hiko moving close. JDM takes automatic down, but they must know where Hiko is. There's so many CTs, though. I mean, it's just so many of them just running from this position. And now we've got the boost up from Elevator. Pimp just a wild spray there to take down the bomb plant. They can't stop the bomb from going down, but does get the kill. The trade comes in, but the man advantage was with the CTs, but not for too long. Alige now in a one versus one. Stewie's come alive. Two quick kills there right at the end as Alige taps the bond there to try to draw out his assailants. And Stewie 2K will indeed emerge from short, and Alige will be ready for it. Liquid finally win a round, but it went down to the last man. And what an interesting round it was from both sides. I think that's one of the most interesting rounds we've had so far, just in how 
both teams were positioned. The adjustment from Liquid and how unconventional the setup was for them. And also Cloud9 kind of working out, okay, they took a pause. What are they up to? And slowly that process of figuring things out. Problem for Liquid is Cloud9 have almost unlimited money at the moment. They had three players with over 14k, including one on 16 and one very close to, but not quite. Boost coming in from JDM towards, or for JDM, towards short, but now it's Cloud9's turn to take the long area. Got flashbangs coming in. I'm not sure where that that one came from. It's, it's really interesting with the short play as well because it's, this this is also a way of playing the two three, which is not as susceptible to rotation problems as the typical two three, where you have much more control. You have the control on long because rotation time on short is much faster to to deal with uh, B splits. But this is actually the a great response from Cloud Nine is to actually abuse this by taking long completely and just tra charging onto the A bomb site from long. It's actually a really good way to deal with it. Oh, the timing unscoped just as he gets a peak of a player and down JDM goes. That's going to be really frustrating for him. Four versus four though. Pimp trying to get some jumping frags, but he's got to be careful. Again, that is nerfed. Nothing lurking around mid, stopping the flank from coming in or trying to, but Nitro will be better on this occasion. Skididdle's holding the platform angle as the bomb might be planted for Platt. It's not actually, but Stroud is there. So we'll see what he can do. Coming up close now, we can take it down in isolation. Two versus two, that bomb is ticking super fast. Three cannot survive. He goes on the site with the defuse kit, and that will be another round in the bag for Liquid. An expensive round, but a round nonetheless. Now yeah. I expect C, the uh, C9 side to have a better buy than Liquid in this situation. That's the second round they won, but the second time it's been just one guy left at the end. And I have to say, Cloud9's, how they've been playing these rounds is awesome. It's so awesome to see, because it's they are actually reacting, responding to how Liquid have changed their setup completely. There is absolute adjustment from Cloud9. They are playing very intelligently. And uh, they were unlucky to, to lose that round, actually. It just came down to the fact that Liquid were a little bit more clutch in that one round. They finally are hitting some of their shots. And they seem to be retaking A much, much better than B, as perhaps you would expect. So these adjustments with heavy catwalk play, it's really working out. And also the catwalk play allows JDM to be more aggressive in middle because he has support from his teammates on catwalk. So now the, the idea for Cloud9 is, okay, well, there's all this catwalk presence. I, I really feel like the, they should repeat the last round. I think the last round was really good for Cloud9. Long is still open. They know that Liquid are playing the same setup. Give it a whirl, James. Give it a whirl. Man down for both sides. No push coming into the B tunnel. Still two people on B. Just waiting for Cloud9 to... Oh, never mind that. They're starting to push now around the 50-second mark. Two players going to find out that there's nobody in the B tunnel, but can they rotate fast enough? Cloud9 on the same timing, but their timing is to push the site. Bomb gets thrown over. Pimp, is he going to push through the smoke? There are people waiting on both sides of it. And Skadoodle in pit, so maybe it would be suicide. Here's the running, tries to punish, can't find a connection. Two men coming in from the long area now, but nothing on the blue angle. Whether you hold it or you uh, use it as an off angle, it is seldom checked. It may not need to be. Skadoodle taking Hiko down. There's a lead stuck around the other side of blue in the corner. Nothing, fires the shot, gets taken down. What more can a liege do? It's him and Pimp versus Skidoo on automatic. Goes for the wide pick of the bait, but what happened there? He ran out of bullets. Pimp is running out of time. He doesn't have a kit and he has wow. no more life. Cloud9 managed to claw a round back. What happened there, Dan? I don't know. That position from automatic at the end there as well. He's 14 HP. He's completely in the open. Just, <laughs> just crouching there in the open. And... He, he's up against pixel angles on a head, like p headshot angles, basically, and he gets it with a spray. That's nuts. Um, yeah, complete chaos there. Cloud9 working out once again that... Because li what Liquid are doing, their adjustment with all that heavy cat control, is actually really smart because it, it's kind of a band-aid solution in some senses that they're having problems in their, their standard setups that B is weak, and... 
they can't quite adjust for it as you normally would by ha by playing a 2-1-2. Two -two. They tried that and they, they kept having weakness on B. So they tried to have heavy catwalk control, which allows a bit more mid-pressure, allows a bit more safe aggression. But the big weakness of it is that long area because it's very hard to re it's much harder to retake the site if you don't have people on long as well. Because how do how do the B players help you out there? They ha do they have do they run through CT spawn? Do you just give that plateau plant to to the to the T's? The T's just get so much more favor in those situations. So it comes down to a lot of clutch shots and Liquid have started to come alive there, but. Eventually, Cloud9, they, they are able to use that advantage strategically and they finally break Liquid, who just kept winning with only one player alive. And this is the result. Liquid are really screwed. <laughs> They're heavily screwed right now, James. All the way screwed, completely screwed. Yeah, their money is dire. They have one run lead, but their money is dire. Very horrible situation that they don't want to lose but uh you have to wonder if they have choice in this situation pondering their options while helicopters fly by i wonder what's in the helicopters apart from a pilot and maybe a co-pilot i was in a helicopter once maybe it's actually being flown by a drone helicopter it drone. felt like a toy being in a toy. It was very unusual. I felt like a big man in a small helicopter as well. Unpause is in. Liquid, a round up, but definitely down in economy, down in firepower. They're barely firing. And this is not a map where you can like win these crazy eco rounds. You, you, it's not really a map where that really works almost ever to be honest against a decent team so it's not it's not like an inferno it's an absolute madness or a train and so on and so forth so already two men down liquid not much hope in this round cloud nine will very very likely equalize and there's not too much that liquid can do to stop that cloud nine just again just gathering a little bit of info here so will spot one of the three remaining players in middle now and one thing you can probably expect as well from the T's perspective is that some of these TTs will try to group up. So you can probably likely assume there's at least two players there and act accordingly. Here comes the push timing from Liquid. Oh, boom, run and gun. The drive-by will give Nitro an AK-47, but no Kevlar means that these CTs are going to be ground up like mincemeat by these AKs up cloud nine, and that's exactly what is going to happen. What is happening? And what has happened? And now it's not happening anymore because it's happened. That that money, this is such a horrible situation for Liquid. Oh yeah. Are they going to play for overtime? They the thing is is that they can't even really get aggressive. They are they actually they are actually trying to play for overtime, which is actually quite smart to do that because their chance to get overtime is so much higher than their chance to actually uh, win from this position right now. And so they, they want to take their chances in overtime. I think that's really smart. He Eco has a big popper pump. He is ready. He's got the green apple. These rounds, so tense, so slow. Neither side wanting to make a mistake, although at the moment, Liquid have little choice, they have to take gambles. They need some kind of advantage. Potential double pick situation coming in. Elige chasing the frag, he will go down. JDM will cost Stewie his life. And again, everything slows to a halt, a minute on the clock. And there's a three-man stack on the B bomb site, which may not be seen by Cloud9 as the bomb's on short, perhaps heading over towards the A site. Yeah, very, <laughs> very hard times. Cloud9 will pick the right bomb side eventually. Nice and methodical. I, I really have been impressed by Cloud9 on this Dust2 so far. I felt like, you know, things obviously didn't start off well from them. But uh, they, they have proven to get out of their terrible, terrible situation by applying really good fundamentals and great on-the-fly intelligent adjustments 
to what the other what the opponent is doing and working that into their structure and that is very important the ability to adjust is very very important the ability to ha to show a structure as well is also incredibly important you can't just be the team that just adjusts just knows how other teams play and just adjust that's like the practice partner syndrome and it, it gets you into all kinds of problems i've seen so many teams suffer from that so it's good to see that cloud nine have a bit of both so there it is and it's all on this round for liquids they are playing for every time they're playing for this round oh it's 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 really tough isn't it because th they have struggled so often on these CT rounds. Do they go to that two-man cat setup again? Do they keep going to it? I think it makes sense. Oh, no, James. Oh, no. Not like this. Not like this. It's the last thing you need in this situation. An early disadvantage. Shot in the face from an auto sniper. He go take him one as well. Oh, no. It's... it's it is a sad state of affairs here. Liquid need to step up big to get back into this one. Oh, Pimp, he got, he's, James he didn't even, he just was running around and he got taken under 21 HP. Look, he's frustrated there, really frustrated. That's, it's such a hard position now for him to play from. So horrible on the uh, CT side as well, when the T side are just using all the time afforded to them. You're just trying to hold an angle, staring at it constantly. Can a leash do it though? No, Jay. <laughs> no. It's all falling apart one by one. I felt like he was the last bastion there. But no. Oh dear. Hiko. Is he going to walk into the tunnel? He may be in for a nasty surprise, Dan. A surprise, but a nasty one. He's not going to the area where he set himself on fire. Pimp coming in now to see what's going on. And he will fall as well. JDM. Are they going to run into the gauntlet, into the Gatling gun? Hiko, not done with it yet. Skadoodle's going to get the headshot. And now it's down to the one versus one. Skadoodle versus JDM. One in the sight, one out. JDM looking to get across. I think he might have got a tag yeah, there. Yeah, he did, I think, yeah. That's nuts. How, did, how is this a one versus one, James? I cannot, I don't even know. And Jaden's going for the, the gamble all the way around to the tunnels. Does Skadoodle read this? Skadoodle's an AWPer, Jaden's an AWPer. They both think like AWPers. Will they read each other perfectly? Skadoodle has the angle. Look at that. Will he get the peak timing? Perfect, yes. With the Tech 9, no less. And Cloud 9 close after a tumultuous start that things just didn't add up. They just didn't seem to go right. Liquid had everything going in their favor. They even won the pistol on the second half, and it looked like that was it. That was a very long slog from Cloud9. They were miles behind. Miles behind, Dan, but such is the nature of Dust2. He gets momentum going, and look how far it can take you. That's a perfect example from Cloud9. Any closing thoughts on their performance there? I, I felt Cl like Cloud9 played really well, and I think, um, again, they showed structure, and they, sh and they showed that they can have that always working for them. But when they need to, they can add something. They can add adjustments into it, and that is how that's the that's how you want it to happen. You don't want to have that reversed in some way. So that's really good kind of strike played by Cloud Nine there, and they des they definitely deserve that win. That was a really fantastic comeback, and what they had to do to accomplish it was very difficult. So props to them, respect. Yeah, nice stuff by the Cloud Nine side again. It was a a very Long, hard slog from them, and I, I can't believe they made it back. But they did. So those are uh, their first games on the board, and that's going to close the show for today. We'll be back with more North America a bit earlier tomorrow, actually. I think we might have some extra matches as well, so stay tuned for those. Make sure you're following the channel. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.